Cycling is one of the toughest sports around, regularly requiring riders to cover hundreds of kilometres over the course of a day and for days on end to boot. Compared to the majority of sports, the physical demands, not to mention the danger, are incomparable, but how much do cyclists actually get paid? In summary, most pro riders don't earn as much as you might think. The minimum wage that pro teams are required to pay their riders is set by the UCI. In 2018, this was increased for the first time in five years, with pro continental teams, that's the second division of pro cycling, obliged to pay a minimum salary of €30,855, and world tour teams, that's the first division, obliged to pay riders at least €38,155. Bearing in mind that the average UK salary is around €32,000, it's not exactly much, especially in relation to other sports. As you would expect though, teams pay their riders a wide range of salaries depending on their role within the team, their experience, and of course their success on the road. At world tour level, domestiques, those are the support riders who do all the work for little glory, can expect to earn a salary of between £150,000 and £400,000 a year. Domestiques with more experience and perhaps a few wins in their own right, sometimes called super domestiques, can expect to earn significantly more than their counterparts. For example, Team Sky's Geraint Thomas, who is more than capable of leading a team at a Grand Tour and has wins and Olympic gold medals to his name, is thought to earn between £1 and £1.5 million a year at Team Sky. These numbers can be improved by good performance by the riders though. A race win or even an improvement in a rider's world tour ranking can trigger bonus payments or an increase in salary. According to Sky Sports, Irish rider Dan Martin, who famously finished the 2017 Tour de France with two fractured vertebrae, would have received a salary increase of around £300,000 thanks to his 2013 Liège-Baston-Liège win. Nice work if you can get it. The stars of the team, the big name sprinters and GC contenders, are where the serious money's at. Mark Cavendish is thought to earn around £3 million a year at Dimension Data, and 14-time Tour stage winner Marcel Kittel is on a similarly chunky package at Katusha. Four-time Tour de France winner Chris Froome signed a new contract with Team Sky in 2016, with a salary understood to be at least £4 million a year. Put that into context, that's 400 Pinarello Dogma F10s or 454,545 aspirin inhalers according to current UK prescription prices. But even those giants of cycling can't match the sport's undisputed superstar. Enter Peter Sagan. The Slovakian is the sport's biggest earner, with his 2016 move to German team Bora Hansgro reportedly landing him a whopping annual salary of 5 million euros. You can't say the 27 year old doesn't deserve it either, after three consecutive world championship wins, multiple big race victories, and his fair share of awkward cooker and shower reds to match. Don't forget, we've just been talking about the salaries paid by teams up to now. Riders can make huge sums from endorsement deals, appearance fees and bonuses. Spanish Grand Tour legend Alberto Contador was reportedly paid handsomely to come out of retirement to race Chris Froome and Marcel Kittel in a farewell criterium in Shanghai in 2017. While there are rumours that Froome will be paid around 2 million euros just to appear at the 2018 Giro d'Italia, a race he traditionally misses in order to focus on the tour. Sagan has a whole host of sponsors, from telecommunication companies to oversized retro sunglasses. The reality is that most professional cyclists get by on a relatively modest salary compared to the millions earned by other sports stars, with the big bucks reserved for the likes of Sagan & Co. Still, getting paid to travel the world doing what you love? Sounds good to us.